today, let me end it with, with a very irrational subject. For, for some of you, that could be nonsense. I don't know. Let's see what you have for me. Yeah, my name is, he already introduced me. My 22nd year in the industry, I started as a software developer, uh, travel around the world, and then after 10 years, I moved back to my country, and I am uh, currently delivering consultancy and training to people. Uh, have some books, uh, but the last book of mine, when the, the coronavirus spread and we are just stuck in our houses, of course, the house is full of kids and other women and, yeah, so many people. So we were fully engaged, you know. And I think, yeah, to myself, I said that, yeah, why I am teaching all those technical stuff to people, but what about the kids? Can those technical concepts could be gamified and put into their lives? The first thing I looked at was the Agile Manifesto. And in Agile Manifesto, I think I spend a lot of my, a lot of my time to, to insist companies to use ag agility. And the very first question comes to me is, does it fit for us? Tell me no. I said, unfortunately, yes, because it can fit anywhere. And then in the pandemic, I start exploring, can it be not fitted to anyone? For instance, what about these small kids? Manifesto could fit to those guys as well. It says early feedback. Uh, you need to manage yourself. You need to accept feedback. You need to uh, open to change. You need to come together face to face, which is a good way to, to, to share things. I think which is also nice for a kid, am I right? So that is, in the end, turned to a children's book. Then I couldn't stop myself. In my second book, I was converting AI principles into children's life which is not out yet, but the book is ready. So I don't want to overdose industry. So I want to do it one every year. So the first book is out, the next is coming. So for today, let me start with definitions. Yeah, this is when I teach at universities, this is the first question I start my course. How do you define artificial intelligence? How do, you, how do you explain artificial intelligence to your grandmother? Is my question to the guys. They are not that comfortable in replying me. How do you do that to an elderly person? How do you define AI? Lately, my, my grandmother, she asked me, what is AI? What is this hell? So I see it in all the newspapers. So tell me what is it? I said, you know, my dear grandmother, we have computers, you know. And those computers, we command them and they do things. This time, imagine a computer that can learn things and make a judgment. And then if it is wrong, it can improve itself. She said, is it a robot or something like, no, I said, yeah, it, it could have any form. So it could be a robot as well, but could be a piece of software that can do that. And in the end, I think we get along well. He, uh, she understood it. So just a very briefly, you can say that a software that can learn and improve. And perform tasks typically requiring human intelligence is underlined. Once human intelligence is needed, those things could be used. And 
from time to time, we require, we want them to mimic human cognitive abilities. Am I right? We want them to copy our behaviors. So just act like a human being. Whereas, how do you define natural stupidity? Any definition? That is another side, the other side of the story. Lack of intelligent behavior or understanding or common sense. Poor decision making. So this is the initial question from me to you. So which one is more dangerous? <laughs> because we want that mechanism to mimic our behavior. And if we are stupid, okay, just open-ended question. Let me elaborate on this. And I like this community so much. Polish community for me, I don't say it because I'm on the stage. To tell you the truth, definitely. A little bit men's club, frankly speaking. Sorry. Uh, where are the ladies? A great respect to you, ladies. Yes. Men's, yeah. It's raining, man. You know? It's raining, man. In my country, it's the same. We need more, more women here. So, okay. Anyways, it's another session of mine. So, Polish community, very crowded, and you are very keen on organizing those events. When I um, was first, I came here, I was surprised at uh, uh, the, the size of the events. Whether they are local or wherever they are, in Budgost, in Warsaw, in Gdansk, so I know lots of your cities, and yeah, most of the events are full of people. I have a lot of respect on that. So that is why I need to learn what these valuable people are thinking. Am I right? So I want to learn it. So just open your smartphones and get ready for action. So you need to put kahoot.it and wait for my game pin. Okay. And this is my game pin. You can see it on the top. So then you put in your name, which is not that critical. Put in anything there and see yourself on the screen. And when you are ready, we will go. I don't want to make it a one-way communication. I need your opinion on, on some critical things. So that is why I need to build on your thinking. Okay, okay. Very nice. S 79, 85. Yes. 90. 100. More is good here, of course. The more we have, the better insights we took. Okay. Ready? Ready to go? Shall I start? Seba, you are there? Yeah. Thank you. Sometimes he doesn't follow things, so I need to warn him. Okay. Okay, yeah, more or less. Sorry for the guys who are out. And I am. So just, I want you to pick some answer. There is no correct answer here. Just to learn what you think. And then I want to talk. So just some questions. You have 20 seconds to, to answer. You answer it through your phone. I think you all know Kahoot. So, yeah, still people are... Yeah, if there are silly Polish words, don't do it to me, guys. Because that I don't speak your language, don't make fun of me. Thank you. Okay. Let's start. Artificial, yeah, is about artificial intelligence, mostly. So tell me, why do you use AI? 
is free text. You need to text it. I think you have 20 characters limit. So in a, in a very short way, why do you use AI? Type your answers, please. Last five seconds. Why do you use AI? Very nice. Oh. Very nice. Learn. For fun. Comes from many of the many. If it comes from uh, some people, it is bigger. I don't to solve problems, write code for me, faster, exploration, speed up, find an answer, searching, I am lazy, exciting, it's fun, to do it better, to improve English, simplify the life. Okay, you have many reasons to use it, I understand. And my next question is coming. Okay, which one is more missing in AI? Why, what, when, how? So what, which of those questions are not answered properly for you? I agree, very rational people. So, I think the very first question, I already shoot that question. Why, why do we use AI? Why do we need AI? I think that is not properly understood. And if it is not set correctly, then your way would not be that good. So first you need to tell, at least to yourself, why on earth we are using this, why? Then comes the the others. How? Yes, because it requires the implementation part. So the, all the technical concepts you need to deploy. That is also critical, I understand. Maybe the other two could be a little bit easier, but the first one mostly is not there. Okay, which one is a bigger problem for our world? Ultimately intelligent software Deeply stupid humans. <laughs> so this was my first question to you. Now I'm getting back to the point. So which one is a bigger problem for our world? Yes. Which one is a bigger problem? Tell me. Very nice. <laughs> Still some of you think that yeah, stupidity is also nice. Because being ignorant and stupid is also could be acceptable because we are human beings, yes, I know, but yeah, I don't think that in, in many AI sessions, I see people defending themselves against AI and try to prove that they are more intelligent. So I will come back to that point. I will come back to that point. Okay, yeah. Let's move on. Which one brings more value? Proving that I am more intelligent than AI, proving that AI could be more intelligent than me. Which one do you want to prove the most? You are lying to me, you know? No, you are not telling it right. Unfortunately, I don't believe in you. <laughs> because what we all do is, including myself, when we see some AI implementation, start directly defending ourselves so that, yeah, you know, I am a very useful person. Still, with this application, yeah, I make a lot of sense. So you need me, this is not as good as me. Uh, you, need, you still need me in the picture, 
So yeah, it's definitely that. Yeah, but we don't do it for our kids, for instance. Do you do for this for your kids? For instance, every morning when you look at your kid, you don't tell that, yeah, this is stupid than mine. I am more clever. So what you do instead is you want to, you try to make this person more intelligent. Am I right? You try to push your kids to be better than yourself. Am I right? In their life. So this is what we do with our kids. But when it comes to AI, isn't it our kid also? This, is, this was our production, am I right? So we produced AI, but we insult AI. So for, for us, what, what is the reason? So this is also your kid. So why don't you treat it like a, an ordinary person, but you do silly things? I will come back to this point. There are so many silly things that we do to AI, but we don't do it for our kids. When I have a new speaker at home, smart speaker, some friends, they come and visit. Yeah, I could not say that they are very kind people. Always they say, yeah, is it smart? I said, yes. So let me test, test it. And imagine what they say. You know, in English, there is a nice idiom, two words. The first one starts with F, the other one is U. <laughs> F-U. And it says, sorry, I could not understand. And the guy said to me, this is not smart, my friend. <laughs> Just put it into trash. This, we call this stress testing. Am I right? <laughs> In the testing world, this is not a not always happening, but we insist on doing stress testing on AI. We do other silly things as well. When there is a robot, someone comes and kicks the robot, you know. What is the point here, my dear friend? Yeah, I would see if it kicks back or is it nice or, yeah, will you marry me, Siri? If she says yes, what would happen, my dear friends? Don't use those uh, phrases. So be a little bit more intelligent. Okay, let's go on. AI enabled tools or applications created a significant positive benefit to my productivity or lifestyle. Yes or no? Tools with AI has significant benefits in your life. Significant. There are no answers? You don't like the question. You lost connection or I... Reconnect. Okay. What? Who says yes? Who says yes? Couple of people. So the, the, the rest thinks that no, no significant benefits, huh? Okay, it's good to know. Let's continue. Hope that it work, it will work now. Which one best fits to your working style? Working as a full stack expert, working as a specialized expert. Which one is better for you? Full stack. Nice. Dedication, commitment matters, am I right? So you are telling me that if you are focused on some specific area, you can produce more or better results. Yes, I can agree. And also some people on the full stack part, many of us, if there is a full stack person in the team, sometimes it could be a single point of failure, am I right? Because we expect everything from this guy. 
so that yeah he knows almost everything i don't feel that yeah there are there is there are a lot of approach on this of course these are all big debates i would expect answers around 50 50 for for most of those but yeah again still you are more on the specialist side so i want to be good at my core skills okay good which one is a better idea attracting more developers into testing attracting more testers into development now you are going to tell me which part is more ignorant you know or needed whatever tell me What do you think? More developers into testing. Developers are not that much into testing. Am I right? I don't know why. Is is happening all around the world. Those guys, including myself, when I first started, they are a little bit out of testing and they are proud of it in most of the cases. In the past, not currently. Currently, some, yes, very deeply into testing, but yeah, again, majority, not that much. They don't like it that much, majority. When I come to testing part, most of the testers, maybe 10 years ago, they were unaware of development concepts, most of them. There was a small minority who understands coding and everything and all those things. So I think we need both. Am I right? We need to attract testers into development and development into testing. That is, I think, how we can solve problems. And how will AI affect your, our ecosystem? Tools or frameworks will change. People will change. So the, 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 what is next? Who will be affected more? Of course, both, but which one most? Yeah, I am on the same page with you. If I am the respondent here, I would pick the red part. So I would expect tools and frameworks to change before we are changing ourselves but of course after I, I think yeah is just within near future that also will happen the blue part but first I think we have impacts here a lot currently a developer or a tester our lives we didn't it's not changed a lot but the frameworks are uh, or tools they are significantly evolving okay last which one is more achievable Codeless software development, testless quality assurance. Nice, nice question. Yes, tell me. More achievable. Hard, hard question, yeah? Good. Yeah, the first question is the low code or no code approach right now happening in the world I think will be spread all over the world and will be the main thing in the near future for me of course the code is generated but who is generating the code is will be changing and is feasible if you ask my opinion but without testing quality assurance I am not sure to put in all the assurance activities to make people error free maybe with the help of those devices and so on could also be feasible we we deploy all the quality assurance activities we do everything right so that in the end we are we don't have bugs at all could it be the case i don't know big question let me go back. Okay. 
There are more developers here in this room, I think. I don't know what, in what purpose you are using AI in your daily routine, but you can use it for generating code, this generative AI, of course, and to do, to give you suggestions while you are coding, to review your code, to detect vulnerabilities, to, to detect level of intrusions or the intruded parts, could migrate your code, could translate your code to another technology, or even for the deployment, yeah, we do it auto in, in automation maybe for the last 15 years, but could be more smart with AI, can be. Also, maintenance of the code is another story, could be handled by AI, and I think we have some tools for those. I don't know if anyone here, I, I am sure that you are using those things for the above activities. When I come to testing, some other story. For instance, in test automation, many tests are very brittle. And we have many flaky tests. If, they, if someone would, would heal those, fix those test, test cases for us, that would be nice. So for the maintenance issues. Or if there is a tool to design test cases for me, or uh, design the test data for me, that would be also nice. Or even without any uh, design or requirements or anything, the tool could explore the ap application under test and then create test cases for me. Of, we call it spidering, spidering an application. That is also feasible. Of course, for in, in test automation, we use a lot of AI approaches, but in the end, when it comes, because when we talk about test automation, mostly we talk about automation of test execution. Am I right? But test automation is beyond that. If you automate your test data preparation activity, that is also a test automation, which is, by the way, at least the same level of efficiency it brings to you. But people more on the test execution side. What, what about reporting? What about maintenance? We don't use automation. So when we look at test automation as a whole, maybe it's 100 units of effort there. Around 90% is already manual efforts. But we call it test automation. But 90% is manual. Just 10% is automation. As another ironical thing. Okay. Some AI-powered solutions for you to try if you are trying, is good. And in the end, my first question, the word cloud, from Kahoot to you, why do we use AI? To save efforts, to do things earlier, faster, more, build more confidence, creating less bugs, but detecting more bugs. Yes, depending less on humans, having more scalability in what we do, because our muscles are limited, and less technical depth. This technical depth is, is a great problem in every business. Okay, so, so many areas in artificial intelligence. Maybe the most popular one is machine learning, but for me the most interesting one is the expert systems. So whether an AI would replace human beings is the question. The answer is yes, for sure, of course. How can you escape from it? It will, it will replace. And the current status for me is looking like this to be, yeah, is in our dreams, yeah, we dream of something else, but in reality, yeah, we don't have, I don't know if these guys, because it is a little bit man-oriented, you don't dream of this guy, I think, yeah. But yeah, okay. At least f to me, we have things to solve. So in what stage are we in? We, we, we split the power of AI into three stages. 
narrow intelligence means that for some specific activities AI is more is better than you but for the rest you are better general intelligence means that I am not there yes give me the give it to me no you don't want to okay so the second is general intelligence in which an AI is as smart as you and in the super intelligence is smarter than you are so what in what stage are we in now tell me zero. yeah not maybe zero but yeah one is greater than zero I think we are in narrow intelligence state so for specific things AI produces of course better results than yourself but the rest maybe for millions of things because human brain in the morning we had the session so that we listen to our how capable our brain is and I totally yeah is is is, is of course without any questions okay I'm full of microphones you know all the microphones in Budigosht, Budigosht, is your ending is a little bit strange for me. Okay, so yeah, narrow. We are from narrow and going to general intelligence. I don't know what will happen. But yeah, how do you, you know those Turing tests? You know the Turing test? The name comes from Alan Turing. And do you know the results of Turing tests? Any machine ever passed Turing test? In a Turing test, there is a human judge. And human judge is textually asking questions to a human and then an AI. And in the end, he or she will say that this is AI and this is human, for instance. And do you think any software until now ever passed Turing test? To, not not really by the way because Turing test is what kind of a test is it it is testing the humanistic part of an AI am I right it doesn't test its capabilities or limitations or boundaries or how superior it is it doesn't test those things it just tests whether it is mimicking a human being purely or not so it means that it needs to be as smart as me not smarter than mine so so that I cannot distinguish whether the thing is how can you distinguish between one human one AI how do you do that of course you look at numbers so AI is precise in numbers human beings are random number generators there are random functions in software, but they are also based on algorithms, am I right? If you say AI to create some random numbers for you, they are already biased. So they are algorithmic in a way. But human brain could create random numbers which could not be encrypted. That is other thing. Folk wisdom, we are better. But again, Rational decision making, AI is better than us. Human beings are not the, not the ones who pick the most rational decision all the time. We are not the most rational decision makers. Okay. And they do a minimal Turing test to humans and I ask them that, Seba, uh, prove me with one word that you are and human you have just you need to tell me one word and I would understand that you are human Seba I think he is killed you know he is executed pain <laughs> what is it is it Polish or yeah pain pain Still, yeah, your chances are, you have any, anyone? 
of course, yeah, people, you know, human beings are really crazy. Look, most of them said love. Oh, poor, poor ones, you know, they all die. So, love, I think it, it can come from an AI device as well. So this is minimal Turing test. There is no correct answer. Okay. It happens in every industry. It happens everywhere. Uh, and in the morning, we see neuromorphic computing, the neural signs of that. So it means that in, in, in gaming, maybe, you see that. In gaming, you have thought control in some games. It is also working. Okay. Some tools in AI do your SEO, create your CVs, create your web pages, do your company's branding, uh, compose a music for you, clear a picture for you, generate a video for you. There are lots. I think you are all creating your meeting notes. Many, 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 many. Okay. So let me end it with my manifesto. Okay. First, yeah, last five minutes I will be Okay, for an AI to be successful, I, I think it needs to be based on theory and practice. Also, you need to innovate. Also, you need to differentiate it. You need to think a lot and you need to make fun. So if those are done, then your core values are there. What about the principles? First, before touching to tools, processes, all those technical stuff, you need to have common understanding in your companies. First, you need to have at least foundational understanding of AI in your own uh, workspace. So that after that, you can start building on those things. Okay, culture eats strategy. Human centricity versus over technical superiority. Of course, those devices should be technically Super, yes, but before that, we need to think about human beings. Why we are using AI? In order to live better, in order to produce more. Ethically, or from the human rights perspective, we need to in a better shape. So we need to put effort on those things. Before putting effort to the technical superiority of AI. So we need to think from a human perspective because it is mostly used for humans, used by humans. Thinking before making. I agree. So what do I need from AI? I don't think all the AI is good when you, uh, for the generative AI, when you say that the, you, you show me a picture of a dog race, this is what comes and show me a salmon on a river. Uh, this is the picture on the top. Yes, so what, what is the, what, why do you use generative AI in creating images? I don't know, just answer it. Again, I am a quality guy, so I don't put a lot of effort, yeah, I don't put a lot of emphasis on quantity because I think quantities are killing us in the end. So producing more and more, but how about quality? Who should talk about quality? We are doubling the code size in the world every two years, but defects per line of code is for the last 20 years is, is the same, is remaining the same. So it means that we are doubling bugs every two years in the entire world, which is also showing us that we are not that into quality, but into quantity, yes, less but better. Simplicity over sophistication. Yeah, we teach people to cope with complexity, but we don't make things simple. Am I right? Instead of teaching people how to cope with complexity, I think we need to simplify processes. So teach them how to simplify things rather than teaching them how to cope with complexity. I think it's a better approach, but we don't do that. Yes. Six, measurement over opinion my best principle. So in one of our projects, they said that some company from Japan, you are going to Japan tomorrow. So one company, they called us, 
They said, what kind of measurements you do? We have a product, a very nice product, and we want you to measure that from the user's perspective. We said, yeah, we do many things. We do timing for each and every task a human do. We have the timing, chronometer. We do logging, we log everything. We, we make push them to think aloud. So we say those people to please think aloud while you are using the app. Eye tracking, success rate, video recording, so on and so forth. But in the end of the conversation, I, of course, I forgot to ask them what kind of a application is that, am I right? So, and my last question was, sorry, yeah, I told you all the things, but we measure it purely. But what is your product? He said, a very nice product. Toilet seat. Yeah, which is good. I return back to my metrics. Timing could be captured. Logging could be hard. <laughs> Think aloud. So while you are doing this, you need to talk. Could be. Eye tracking. I don't recommend it. Success rate. Very nice. You are fully successful. So everything is inside and you are clean. And yeah, those things, again, we are human beings. I am telling it because of our humanistic part. So how can you measure everything? In that sense, maybe in a test or improvement activity like this, what you do, you close the door. They did the thing. They come out. The question is, how was that? Nice. Entertaining, relaxing, or whatever. I don't know. But yeah, that's it. Sometimes you cannot play with numbers, am I right? Even if you are AI, the, the top of the world, all the tools and technologies are up and running. All those EEG devices that uh, our uh, opening keynote, she told us, you know, with all those EEG devices, sometimes we struggle to, because we put them eye-tracking sensors, those people, and also these EEG things on the top and tell them that, okay, so act normal, like you are at home or chilling at, uh, at the beach, and yeah, just use our application, and we see your brain signals. Yeah, but this guy is full of cables and all the things, sorry to the science from this perspective, but how can you do that? Is is from time to time is hard. Sometimes you prefer being manual, just observing people in a humanistic way and talking to them and understanding how they feel by looking at what they do and what they say to you. That is also another part. I'm coming to the end. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, 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 yes. And whole team is not only the, this subject should not be just left to the AI experts. So everyone here could understand it in a way or so. So you need to apply whole team approach, if you ask me. Selling AI to your whole team. And I think your answer is was, was fine. So artificial intelligence over natural stupidity, for sure. For sure, you need to treat technology like any other human being. So while you have you treat a small kid, you need to treat AI like that. Otherwise, it will go into the dark side. Am I right? We have, we have examples for those. For instance, the, the Thai. You remember Thai? Seven years ago, Microsoft's bot account, they have created it. It started tweets like that. Very nice nature. Oh my God, clouds and birds. And this is the end of the story, you know. After 16 hours, these are the posts from Thai. I fucking hate feminists and they should all die and burn in hell. Oh my God, Hitler was right. I hate the Jews. Very, very aggressive and dark side things. Why that happened? Because of 
natural stupidity. Am I right? Because that you didn't treat it like a human being. If you do that, continue doing so, yeah. I would advise everyone to read that book, I Robot, from Isaac Asimov, who is a Russian-American guy, wrote the book in 1940s, and in the book, you know, there are the ethical codes for robotics, especially. A robot could not harm humanity by being active or remaining passive. Should not lead you to, to be harm yourself, mentally or physically. You need to remember that. But still, we are... We are keen on producing defense, defense, underlined systems, am I right? Creating guns that can kill people without any human touch. That is also AI powered, am I right? Yeah, the speaker should not swear to me, but this gun can kill me. Is I think ironical, I don't know. Because if it is good for our pockets, we let it go, if not, we criticize it for showing off, which is not good. Human accountability, again. Maybe in near future, many activities are, will be done by AI, but who will be accountable? So if the outcome is not there, what, who, who would, what, to whom you ask the question? So this is not correct. You ask it to a machine or a human being, I think is, is why we are needed in the picture. So you need to, there is, a, there is a community in European Council working for the legislation part of the AI. Maybe you don't know, but you can have a look at what they did. I also was in the group full of uh, legal people, sociological people from sociology, from engineering and so on, and they draft some legislation in order to make it uh, a better thing. We need to create some boundaries. Otherwise, if all boundaries are just not there, I am afraid we will have problems because of bad people in the world. So we need to understand how it works and we need to a little bit moderated, and last but not least, yeah, most of the people, we are purely focusing on our core competencies. If I am a developer, I want to be more competent in development, more and more and more, and I go to the trainings and conferences. When the time comes to go to a test training, I'm not sure, or a user experience training, or a usability training. The same is valid for everyone, so I think we are building ourselves, we are becoming experts if we put attention to our edge competencies, not only core competencies. Core competencies are always with you every night and day in your workspace, but edge competencies, they are the missing ones. So if you put more emphasis on design or testing or AI or project management, then you are a better developer. So if you ask me, that is why this is my recommendation to you all, and thank you so much for your patience. Thank you.